Jen Monroe. Um, I am an assistant professor in the writing and literature department, which is very happy to bring to you this class of seniors who will be reading for the next four weeks, right? Four weeks? Maybe five? Maybe five? I don't know. Only four or five? <laughs> um, five total. Okay, five total. So, welcome. This is the first one. So, if you've never been to anything like this, or if you have been to something like this before, your fire exits are there. There, I'm kidding. Uh, what I'm not going to kid about is cell phones. Um, if you would please turn them to vibrate, to silence, off, all together, whichever works best for you, just as long as they don't ring. So welcome. I need my mic. Use my human mic. Uh, my colleagues, um, Chris Anderson and Monica O'Brien, have graciously given me the opportunity to introduce Mr. Matt Williams. <laughs> Matt Williams is the type of student I hope to get and at the same time am petrified to get. <laughs> I hope to get students like Matt because he's naturally curious, um, he's naturally talented, he's open to hearing all points of view before making his own decision and he's the type of person who always raises the bar no matter what conversation or classroom he happens to be in. I'm afraid of students such as this because I worry that I'm not going to be able to challenge and to inspire them for four continuous years. I have no doubt I'll be able to support them, but it's a little nerve-wracking when you have somebody such as Matt who asks questions, lots and lots of questions, and often I don't know the answer to those questions. Um, but I've grown to like this because it gives me uh, the chance to learn something new, which is great, to look at pieces of literature that I think I know really well in a different way, and, and to consider ideas and the world in general um, in ways that hadn't occurred to me before. There was a buzz around Matt from the moment he came to campus. Chris, my office mate, told me about this kid who backpacked in China and went to some Quaker school who was in his Comp 1 class who was really engaged and very interesting. And I was immediately excited when this kid um, was on my roster for Comp 2. Um, and I wasn't disappointed. And um, I've been nothing but impressed ever since. Uh, Matt is living the life of the writer while being a student of writing. And in many ways, he's He's really taken responsibility for, for the poet and, and the student and the teacher that he's become. Um, I remember he came to me two years ago and said, I want to look at what long poems are like. And I said, OK. So I gave him John Berryman's The Dream Songs, and I gave him Hart Crane's The Bridge, and said, go, have fun. And what you'll hear tonight, and if you see his senior project, some of what he learned on that exploration is, is in there directly. So. And he wouldn't have gotten that necessarily in a class. Um, also, while creating this senior project, which is wonderful, uh, he started his own literary magazine and got some of his own work published and at least two others, right? Mm -hmm. He's also been learning to teach. Um, he has been my um, instructional assistant and in intro to poetry, and he was Eric's instructional assistant and in to intro to poetry. Um, and I don't doubt that in the not too distant future, that he will become a professor that students hope to get and yet are afraid to get. <laughs> <laughs> I've told the students in Senior Project that this is a good opportunity when they're up here before they, they read to maybe thank some people. And I want to thank you, Maddie, for helping make me better at what I do every day. <laughs> There's a lot of people to thank. All the little people I stepped on getting here. <laughs> you get the first laugh and then you calm down. No, uh, uh, there's, there's people here I didn't actually expect to make it. Like my brother, I, 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 I didn't expect you to be here. It was really exciting <laughs> uh, since we don't see a lot of each other. And I wasn't expecting Charles to be here. No, Morgan. In fact, I wasn't expecting a lot of you to be here. It's just easier to pick them because they're in the front row, so sorry if I missed it. Um, uh, 
I could go on. I mean, I hope, hopefully, I've shown the people who really deserve thanks that uh, how much I appreciate them. And if I haven't, then it's a grave error, and I'm sorry. But uh, I really, I'm trying. And I'll get to you if I haven't yet. Um, I guess we'll get the ball a rolling. Um, oh, the, the, the applause. Uh, I, I, I remember I'm supposed to talk about this because I'm a poet. Um, <laughs> you're, not <laughs> you're not required to applaud uh, after every poem. I can't stop you if the spirit takes you. Um, I won't feel bad if you do not. Uh, I'll be reading for about 15 minutes, um, and at the end, feel free to then burst out into applause. <laughs> or if you don't, thank you, Mr. Vance. <laughs> and if you don't, then shuffle out, and we can cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, my collection, City of Paper and Iron, which I'm going to be reading from tonight, is divided into three sections. The first is our shorter poems. Um, I, I can't say that they're, they're, I keep wanting to call them short poems, but that's not really accurate. Um, they are shorter than the other two sections, which are two long poems. Um, one of 50 parts and another that's about 15 pages long. Um, and I'll be reading excerpts from all three. Uh, I'll begin by reading about, I believe I have, I have about five poems from the first section. Um, and I will move on from there. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain a couple pieces as I go, but um, I'm going to begin with playing with matches. Playing with matches. This boy grew up soft, and in his blood runs concrete sidewalks and manicured lawns. He knows the city framed through the train windows, the graffiti gang tags on the backs of buildings. Once he thought he saw a dead man under a shopping cart and a radar tower hidden behind copper trees, but it was all going by so fast, who could say for sure? His mother knows better. She remembers the projects, a crescendo gunshot lullaby, the engine growls, the way rubber and asphalt meet. It makes her tongue rough. There was also the men playing checkers with chalk and beer bottle caps, the five and dime candy, and the hopscotch. She counts down numbers under her breath and ankle twitches. She tells her son about the time she was young, a child who lived next door, the same duplex, came screaming down the grassy hill behind the house, his shirt burning, an innocent fireball. She remembers her grandmother throwing him to the ground with her palms and forearms beating down the flames. That was how she learned not to play with matches, how this boy learned to imagine. One of my pauses maybe to get some water, so forgive me now and again. <laughs> 